Hello everybody, here we are again. I keep saying hello to you. I'm sorry about that. It's just that I'm so overwhelmingly excited. We're sitting here with a herd of beefaloes, and the beefaloes, as you can see, are, well, sort of marching gently to the west underneath a burgeoning storm that seems to be coming in from the east. Isn't that pretty? I think it's absolutely magnificent. And I know that Ali was showing you the sunset, and I thought I might take my first illegal picture of a sunset today. Um, so what I will do is say, look over there. <laughs> what do you see, David? Oh, it's, it's rather bright, though, isn't it? Very bright. So bright. It's so bright that I don't know that even I am, uh, would be able to take an illegal picture of it. Yes, it's rather too bright at the moment. Uh, we'll keep looking at it, though, in the hopes that it gets slightly less bright, which it obviously will as it dips below the Olololo escarpment. In the meantime, let us enjoy the beefaloes, which are now starting to sort of bathe in its glory, completely unaware, of course, that the lions are not too far behind. They haven't got up. Uh, they were still lying down when we left them. And I don't know if that was the whole pride, because there were rumours that the pride was in fact stalking this herd of buffalo a little bit earlier on. And so it could be that there are members of the pride rather closer to the herd than they are would be comfortable with. But I think that the little baby I saw earlier is the one that will be in the most trouble should the lions come up towards us here. No, we are not far at all uh, from the camp. Oh dear, David, do you think that <laughs> seems to have found a termite mound on which to scratch a rather awkwardly positioned itch? Hmm. Fascinating. Good, well, lots to eat here for the buffalo, of course, especially while the uh, well, I suppose more favoured, if we dare we say it, more favoured figures that are, of course, the wildebeest before they arrive back, which will not be in too long from now, that the wildebeest will be coming up this way and taking all that is good to eat, and, of course, taking the attention of the predators, which I think will be a great relief to all concerned. Well, all buffalo concerned, that is. And they're all just slightly suspicious of us. The, there does seem to be a little bit of a breeze blowing down towards them. And so they are all just slightly suspicious of what we want. And I must say, as Steph said to me, as I just before I got here, he said, you won't believe how bright the sun is here. Right, so I think we're sticking with me. I think we're still live. Are we still live, Megzy? No, we are still alive. That is excellent. Uh, Steph was saying the sun is so much brighter here, and I think it's A, because of the altitude, and B, because, of course, we're so much closer to the equator. But it is quite amazing how bright that sun was, despite the fact that it's about to go down. And if you watch that buffalo, uh, or if, if we look at the one over there, if you don't mind, Darby, and you're actually going to see the sun disappear off its back. Uh, further to the right that one there you're just going to see the sun disappear off its back and in fact that's the only way to watch the sunset today because it is so startlingly bright from actually looking at the sun it's quite nice isn't it david yes yeah, it's quite artistic i feel hmm. but you'll see it falling into shadow almost immediately certainly within the next two minutes that buffalo is going to be in shadow dun 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 Hello, Holly. You're wondering about the buffalo and the mara and whether they're similar to the ones in Juma. They're exactly the same species. Uh, you might find some vague genetic difference, but I don't think it will be particularly substantial. And uh, to, for all intents and purposes, yes, they are exactly the same as the ones in the mara. And a Juma. Am I making sense? I think I am. Oh, 
out. Well, the sun seems to have gone now, as you can see, and we'll just quickly show you the horizon over which it's sunk. But it is so bright. Hello, William, aged eight, all the way from Oregon. You say, the Mara looks kind of like where you live, and do I like it here? Uh, William, aged eight, all the way from Oregon. I imagine that there are slightly fewer trees than there are in Oregon, and I imagine also that there is a lot less rain. But I suppose you must have grasslands like this. Unfortunately, you don't have these sorts of animals, but you used to have, obviously, uh, thousands and thousands of the American bison or buffalo there and various things that used to eat them, wolves and that sort of thing. And, uh, William, your second question is, yes, I, I do like it here very much. It's a, it's a spectacular place to be. There's a bull showing that he's big and tough and strong and virile. All running away from another one, can't really tell. <laughs> but it is just amazing, William, you know, I don't know what it's... I've never been to Oregon, I'm just talking about the little bits that I've been told about it. But it is amazing here, William. I don't know if it's the same as where where you are, but everywhere you look here in the Mara, something amazing is happening, even if it's just a view. And in fact, what I will do is just ask David. David, in the woodland over there, in fact, it's pretty much a forest, actually, there are two chestnut shapes. Can you see them there? Three or four, in fact, and I think they are indeed impala. Can you believe it? Forest-dwelling impala. Now, I am being slightly sarcastic, of course. They are standard-issue East African impala. But there they are, living in a riverine forest. I mean, just look at those trees. I'm sad we won't be able to do too much walking in amongst those trees, but we will certainly get in amongst them as much as we possibly can. How much time have we got left? Oh, we're going to have to move, Megzi, I'm afraid. You can stay with us while we drive, but we are going to have to move up towards home um, because we'd have to be out of here by half past six. We will, of course, be doing quite a lot of night stuff in the coming months, so it won't always be that we have to race out by half past six. So we'll just see what happens going forward. Well, we've now got 17 minutes, and Darby, I don't know if you can, you sh is the roof going to get in the way? We've basically got to climb to just to the right-hand side of where you've just seen the sun go down. So we're going to climb up to that part, and we go through this herd of beefies. Hello, do you like my hat? Not very much, clearly. Sorry about that. Sorry to disturb you. Lion's just that way, coming this way. Be careful, will you? Good. Just spectacular. Some zebra up ahead. And all sorts of other things here. Now, I think we're going to head across to Ali, who has a impala, but not one living in a forest. <laughs>